Hello and welcome to the first CAD Dimensions Tech Tip. My name is Jesse and this tip we're going to be talking about appearances. Specifically with appearances we're going to be talking about the filter. Now the filter can be a little bit confusing so let's go over what this does. There are several ways that we can add appearances to a model, though my favorite way is to apply it through the task pane. If we find an appearance that we like, any appearance will do, I'll grab one of these, let's say white medium gloss plastic. If I drag and drop this onto the model, we have a few options. And in fact, if I drag and drop, move my mouse away, nothing actually happens. Let's do that again so we can take a look at the filter. As soon as I drop, we have several options that the filter provides us. This allows us to tell SolidWorks exactly where we want this appearance to go. Let's start from the right and we'll work our way back to the left. Far to the right, we see that we have the ability to apply this to the component as we're in an assembly. If I move to the left, we're applying this to the part. I'll make this a little bit more clear in just a moment. The next one to the left, we see that I can apply this to a, the body. Now the three of these are very similar in this case, at least visually similar, because the body, the part, and the component all look the same in this assembly. If I move one to the left, we see that I have the ability to apply this only to the feature. This shows up as a mirror because this tire had been mirrored. The next one to the left applies this only to the face. Now this is the hierarchy that appearances work in SolidWorks. Each one further to the left will override the ones to the right. For example, if I apply this appearance to just this part, and we come back and we apply a new appearance, let's apply this one to the face. If I apply this one to the face, this will override that appearance, the appearance that I just put on, because that appearance was applied to the part. Now we can track these changes pretty easily if we come back to the tree. If we use our appearance tab, and select view appearances, we have the ability to see what's been added to our part or our assembly. Here we see that I now have my magnesium, I've got my white that we just applied to the tire, and I also have the red that I applied to the face. Now this lists out in terms of history, I actually prefer to switch this over to hierarchy. This gives me a little better handle over where I've applied my appearances. And when I switch this to hierarchy, we can now see that those filters are gone all I see is the face and the part. If we expand these out, we can see exactly where those have been applied. So we can see that I have two part appearances and I have one appearance on the face. Now I said I would explain part and component a little bit further. To do that, let's move back to the assembly tree. From the assembly tree, if I expand out the chevron, we can see more of our appearance options. One of the handy visibility tools that SolidWorks has built in is this column right here. And we can see through appearances, we have an idea of what's going on in terms of part and components from our assembly. Now I applied that white directly to the part and we see that show up in this bottom right corner. If I go back and I apply an appearance, let's say blue, in the assembly, we'll see that that assembly color will override the original part color. So think of the component color as the part color for the assembly. Thanks for watching this tech tip and I hope you'll stop back for our next one. Don't forget to check us out on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and our blog for more great content by clicking on the links in the description below.